Hi guys and welcome back to Modifix. My name's Dan and today, yeah, you guessed it, we are modding. Today we're going to continue the turbo build. Um, I decided to do, split the video into parts because uh, it's quite long and I don't want to bore you guys. Let me know in the comments below if there's too much detail or too little detail, I doubt that, but maybe. <laughs> and if you want to know anything specific, drop me a comment below. I'll be happy to help you out and enjoy the video. The exhaust has finally arrived. It's time to start messing about with that now. What I want to do is I want to come out of there on a elbow and then straight out of here. So it's going to be center exit on the bumper. So I've just got to figure out what I've got to cut out here. I've marked out from the center. Um, and then if we go around here, you will see that we have this baby in the way here. So I need to grind those welds away or cut those welds away. Get this out of the way. Measure up at the bottom and then cut that section out. All right, a little bit of angle grinder action. And that's off. I might scurf that back a little bit and then uh, mark up the rest of it to be cut out. All right, she fits. So a nice slash cut tail there and uh, it's going to sit about an inch above that hole there and then um, around the back that's going to elbow into that this tailpipe's probably going to sit about there realistically so lovely so next bit we've got to first of all determine where that's going to connect to that and then weld that up and race across the top to a keep some structural rigidity in that crash bar and be uh, avoid the bumper from burning so you will have seen this piece before coming out of the turbo don't need the flexi well i could do with the flexi but it won't fit in the hole so let's get rid of the flexi i'm going to cut it around there and then sleeve that exhaust into here and that will come out the turbo two sensors straight into the can so i've cut that off that flexi sleeved this bit inside and I've tack welded it in place. I measured an inch either side of the tailpipe and I used some inch tape underneath uh, as a spacer and now if I take that out there we go sits nice and center. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to undo that v-band and take it to a very good friend of mine who's a much better welder than I am and uh, get him to fully weld this up and then that's the exhaust done pretty much i've just got to put some hangers on it which will go from there to about there and maybe from there to there i don't know if i need two yet and that's it we'll call that done okay guys that's all fully welded up now and it comes out of there tighten the v-band and it sits beautifully right here with an inch all the way around I spaced that with the inch tape again. But now what I want to do is I want to box all this in. And then I want to build a bridge from here around and then down. But first I want to stick the bumper on and see how it looks. All right guys, so this is the exhaust fitted. I think it looks absolutely mental. <laughs> I like it a lot. But um, going back to the clearance, the top there, has about just under an inch. That would be an inch, I reckon. Um, just move that down. But then at the bottom, not a lot. So I think I'm gonna go probably another half inch down the bottom and then uh, build the box. Because I wanna make sure there's plenty of clearance all around. I don't want any rattles or bangs or anything heating up more than it should. So time to get cutting. Okay, and just like that, it's all welded up. <laughs> no. Um, I've just made a stencil out of cardboard. I'm going to do lap joints on either side and at the bottom. Uh, easier to weld and it might give it a little bit more strength as well if it's overlapping. So yeah, that's that bit. I'm going to cut it out of metal now and then get welding. Hopefully I do a good job of it. Alright guys, so after lots of cutting and shaping and mucking about, I've got that. So what I'm going to do is at the bottom, as you can see, it's pretty much there. Needs a bit of bashing about. And then I'm just going to probably get a jack in here and sp spread it apart and then weld it at the top 
and uh, on the sides and then once that's done behind. The next thing I want to do is build the, the bit that comes off here, goes across there and down again, just to give it a bit of rigidity back there. Okay, as you may or may not be able to see, the top bit has now been built. Just a bit of strap and that will be welded in place and that will protect the bumper to a degree and brace the crash bar again. So now I've just got to prep it all up, weld it up and it'll be done. Okay, and just like that, it's the return of Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> um, my welds aren't the greatest, I'll be the first one to admit that, but it's alright, it's strong, it'll hold. And then I've put in this strap across the top for reinforcements around there and then down the back the back's even worse but it'll hold that's the main thing it's strong and then up here and that's it that's my lovely little square for my exhaust now I just gotta make sure the exhaust still goes in it the front welds I've ground them down so they look a bit prettier as you can see it's all nice and beefy and I've put some zinc galvanizing spray on there I think I'll just spray it black now and that will be done. Alright, I think we've done a good job. There's a little gap between the bumper and that metal ball, which is good. The beast has been caged. I'm happy with that. Okay, so she's square in the hole now. Lovely. Next job now is to sort out the actuator on the turbo. So, as you can see, Penny's right at the back, or you can't see even. Penny's right at the back. And the actuator needs to be repositioned because it used to live in line with that bracket there and uh, yes as you can see we are totally the other way around now so that job will get done tomorrow but we are getting there so I've got this actuator which came with a turbo which looks like someone's DIY made adjustable but it's got fixed bracket on it and it's massive so it won't like look at that it hits the housing so that's no good and then with my Chinese turbo I've got this little slimline baby which is adjustable but it's not at the right angle at all so I'm gonna have to make a straight bracket basically another problem with this is that the bracket even if it was straight the arms really long so I'm gonna adjust that up first all the way to the end and see if it can actually work like that otherwise I'm gonna take some bits of this and mess about and see what works and uh, undo this bracket as well. All right, so I've adjusted that down to the absolute max and it's borderline too long. So I'm gonna try and tap those threads out a bit further down if I can. I mean, to be honest, this penny lug or whatever you wanna call it is a bit sloppy in the hole. So let me try that one there that looks a perfect fit okay that setup seems to be a lot better it's a lot shorter let's take these two bolts off now all right after lots of cutting and grinding and measuring in about an hour and a half or whatever um, I come up with this contraption here uh, some of this is going to be lopped off I just want to decide what I'm doing first it's better to have more than not enough and then as you can see here we almost have a connection and then that clears nicely on that side now. I'll put out a slight slant so it um, comes in at an, at an angle and clears that water fitting. Um, so yeah, we're looking good until we fit it on the car and then uh, we'll find out it doesn't fit. <laughs> All right guys, um, I've pretty much made the bracket now. Obviously it needs refining a little bit, but the bracket has been made and uh, it goes onto the penny nice, onto the wastegate door. Nice adjustable bit here. I had to extend, so I've used the bit from the actuator that I acquired. I'm using the Chinese actuator from the Chinese 2871R. And then this bit here, this is called a threaded rod connecting bolt. I went and bought some of those from Screwfix, longer ones, because the one I had was that big and it wouldn't reach. And uh, as you can see, that one's a lot longer. That one's 30 mil, I believe. So um, got some of those. I even got some threaded rod just in case. But uh, I don't think I'll be needing that now. So yeah, I'm quite happy. I just got to make sure that it all fits and clears now, because it's um, it has to clear, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm proud to say that it fits. 
I'm holding the towel there by hand and uh, it clears everything really well actually. Look, so uh, happy with that. Let's crack on. The bracket has been made now and it's all ready to be uh, bolted to the turbo. And I'm just going to final assembly the turbo basically. So I'll get this all mounted on nice and sealed up, tightened down, new studs and nuts on that. And then all the water and oil hoses can be finally put in place. Uh, and the turbo outlet on that side and then we'll get it ready to put on the car all new studs and nuts as you can see here and then I've got all new brand new gaskets as well all right guys I put some new studs on here I thought I'd leave those two because they're original Nissan and uh, basically this doesn't want to go on anymore so uh, these cheap Chinese V-band T28 turbo to V-band adapters are a bit crap really, but you get what you pay for I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file these holes out so it actually fits and then let's just hope that uh, the stud's clear. I mean there was all this extra metal where there were extra lugs, I don't know if they're supposed to be a multi-fitment for other turbos as well, but I cut all those extra lugs off and made it nice and pretty. So. Again here, there was an extra lug as well. And here, when, when the stud comes through, it pretty much touches there. So uh, in terms of getting a nut on there, that will certainly be interesting as well. And with the help of this guy here, and actually this disc here, guess what? It fits now. This V-band adapter was actually terrible in terms of fit. None of these nuts had any clearance whatsoever. But luckily, the wall of this thing is well thick. So I got the old grinder out and took a massive chunk out. And um, guess what? It all fits now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna tidy up the casting marks and stuff a little bit now. I'm gonna take this big hunk of metal out here. Just make it all nice and a little bit lighter, I think. See those casting marks there? As you can see in here, it's beautiful and smooth, so I don't think we need those. So I'm just gonna smooth it all out a bit and then bolt it all up. And that, my friends, is the V-band adapter on there. And by gosh, is it on there, mate. I've tightened those nuts till kingdom come. So hopefully, They'll stay there and I've used some high temp sealant as well. All right, that little inlet fitting has been fitted now. All nice and solid. A long time ago, I bought this locking tab kit uh, with these special nuts. So I'm gonna use that and lock it all in position. And again, I'll be using the high temp gasket. The turbo to manifold gasket and lockers are all on and those nuts are actually pretty cool they've got like these little I don't know if you can see that they've got these little cutting bits in them that actually cut into the, the stud all right guys everything's done and sealed now I've put the v-band adapter on all the gaskets are done on the uh, exhaust to turbo and then I've tightened that one up put a bit of paste around that as well Tighten this one up with a new gasket, so that's all done. New bolt down there. Um, these water hoses have all been tightened up and prepared. So I actually mock fitted this to make sure the hoses were pointing in the right direction and had the right amount of length as well. This is the oil return hose, which will go down there. And then we've got, uh, I made up some water hoses from the engine, one from the engine to the turbo and then the other one from that T piece to the turbo. This one comes from the radiator and this one goes into the engine. I don't think it matters which way around you put them. In the TT manual it says to put that one at the back of the turbo water feed and then that as the return. But mine's the other way around so technically it should be the other way around but I don't think it really matters. I might do it the other way around, we'll see. I was gonna make a bracket to support the manifold but I think the manifold's okay for now and um, let's let's focus on getting the car started and running and 
all that stuff and then we can put a bracket in later if required and that there guys is my finished bracket all painted and everything what do you think looks nice doesn't it looks kind of factory i think i'm happy with that so anyway that's the actuator on i haven't put the circle on yet because i want to pop that off um just to get the car started up first now i think it's time to hang it all right guys so gasket wise i've got brand new gasket for it it's a multi-layered metal jobby just a stock one the good old rtv and that's it so i'll put rtv on the on the engine and then gasket on rtv on this manifold and then tighten it all together the manual says 37 nanometers of torque to torque it down so i'll give that a go and see how we go from there guys the turbo is on manifold has been torqued up 37 nanometers uh, according to the manual so i've done that the angle of these bolts was a bit dodgy because i had a short extension on there and as you can see here it might have slipped a little but it's on there and it's staying on there as you can see from the sealant that's coming out so now i'm just going to connect these water lines to whichever side they want to go and then um, connect the oil drain to the oil drain and then I'll show you what I'm doing with the oil feed we are getting very close now everything's on the water lines are connected and I've made little sort of brackets for them one goes onto the subframe where originally I think that was a heat shield bolt and then that one sort of is trapped in that little cap for the gearbox we I suppose some cars have a transducer or whatever and some of us use that hole to fill the gearbox with but anyway water hoses are on and uh, that one's been sheathed so it doesn't actually rub against the subframe the other one is far away from everything and it's been held there by that little clampy and uh, we are sweet the other thing we've done is the oil return goes from there all the way down to there that's cool and it clears the drive shaft by about about an inch i think inch and a half and the next thing now is i've got to plumb this oil feed and make sure it's nicely rooted and sheeted up for where it might have contact with the sump so now if you can see that oil feed line that comes past here i just put it in as mock-up to see how it's going to root because past that bit of the sump there that's where i'm gonna to have to put some sort of sheathing or some cushioning and then here it's too dark that's better so i've got this oil filter sandwich plate um and that has three fittings on it there there and there oil feed will go from here and then one of these i think this one i'm going to use for the oil pressure gauge so there's a little sender that will go into there and then this thing here just unscrews from the main oil filter housing and then the oil filter goes onto there so I'm gonna do that there's a little o-ring there as well which helps it to seal so I'm just gonna take this off now put some Loctite on there and uh, get it all nice and set up and then I'm gonna put it on there forever with a sheath on this pipe this thing's all prepared now I've used some thread sealer Loctite 243 is what is recommended in the manual so i've used that so i've got the oil pressure sensor there the oil feed to the turbo there and that's just a blank which i may choose to use for oil temp or something else later in the future but now what we're going to do is we've got to bolt this in i've lubed that up with a bit of oil as well um, that goes up and then this fitting here which is a three quarter inch um goes into the car and then the filter goes on that end so i'm going to get all that fitted up right now all right guys we all plumbed up this is the oil feed what i've done is i've sleeved it with some coolant pipe i mean there were two pieces so there's a bit of tape in between it's um quite tight here on the floor so it doesn't look the prettiest in the middle but it does the job and it won't chafe the sump now so that's good and then uh, you got the oil drain there, you can see that. Go straight to the turbo and you've got 
the oil feed. So the oil feed comes from this lovely adapter that I showed you earlier. So I've got my oil pressure switch there and then I've got the oil feed fitting and the oil feed hose going straight to the top of the turbo and then my oil filter so that side of it is all tightened up and done guys a pretty big update now um, everything is pretty much buttoned up so all the intercooler hoses now have been clamped so that's all done I've got some vacuum hose split it and then I've cable tied it to there so it doesn't actually cut into the hose and then coming this way clamps on there MAF adapter fitted there and then into the throttle body now that's that's all done I've got to the compressor side come up that's brilliant I had to shave the elbow a little bit to actually get a jubilee clip to sit on there nice and clear the nuts and all that stuff but that's worked and then now we've come all the way to the induction side here where the air filter will eventually sit down there and we've hit a bit of a snag i forgot about the dipstick which needs relocating so tomorrow i'm gonna have to wake up bright and early and uh, just sort of pull this a little bit up and mount it a little bit higher and hopefully that will be that and get this wiring out of the way and then this will sit better as well this pipe in, in that gap as you can see there's a a marginal amount of room between that what I might actually do is cable tight to the cross brace maybe or work out a way of making some sort of clamp to clamp it to this turret here so yeah very very good progress now I think we're very close to start up which might be tomorrow we've just got to do fluids now fit all the sensors put those bungs in these holes I've got to find a bunk for that. Fit the sensors, as I said, math sensor, both of the O2 sensors. I'm going to have to leave one out for now. We'll have pre cat, post cat with a defouler. And plumb, do some vacuum plumbing. I don't really think the vacuum plumbing is necessary at the moment to start the car. I just want to start the car and let the car think that it's still naturally aspirated. Just to check if we've got any leaks anywhere, make sure everything's legit airtight. And then what we can do is change the injectors, plug in the management. That's quite exciting as well. Very, very good progress today. So tomorrow, let's finish off this side of things, make that bracket, remount that, finish this bit off here, and then we are going to be rocking and rolling. I can't wait to see what this exhaust sounds like. It's going to be mad, I think. And <laughs> I've got a few plans on how to fix the madness, but let's cross that bridge when we come to it. But I'm very, very pleased with the outcome. It's very simplistic. It looks good. It's practical. Everything comes apart easy. Nothing comes in the way of anything. You know, look at all the space around it. It's, it's amazing. You know, when I build my heat shields, it should be quite an easy exercise. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I've got to build an exhaust hanger, which will come from here and go straight to the box around here somewhere. So um, yeah, I need to do that. But that's just going to be a simple L shape made out of this lovely bit of bar here, which is 12 mil stainless bar so yeah i'm just gonna put that in the vice give it a good old clout and that should be that hopefully i'll have to put an l here and then maybe another l on the other side so we can weld it to the exhaust